It's a delight to welcome you on board the Newsline sale tonight. We shall be making stops at various aspects of human angles and be sure for impact as we offload a series of features. I am Jennifer Igwe, your host. First, we will beam a light on spirited resilience. We have a story on an amputee footballer with dancing dexterity. Her inspiring life captures lines by the late American author and disability rights advocate, Helen Keller, which says a bend in the road is not the end of the road unless you fail to make the turn, right? Stay tuned for this ability in disability case that shows giving up should never be an option. Then the late Bob Marley was a reggae king. He was regarded as a king of reggae. And although he joined his forebearers 42 years ago, Bob Marley is still one of the world's most revered music icons. A case of his songs living long after his death. Evil Redemption Song, one of his works, is still an anthem for emancipation today. There are other reasons why many still celebrate Bob Marley. I am sure you want to know more, right? Wait for it. Also on cue are cultural celebrations by the Berum people of Plateau Joss. Find out why the Nzem Berum Cultural Festival is an annual event with remarkable impact. We have other exciting features plus update on some airy stories, worrisome ones indeed, making the rounds. But first, the news segment and my colleague Claire Adelabu Abdurazak in Abuja is waiting and looking like someone who celebrated <laughs> International Mother's Day today. Happy Mother's Day to you, Claire. Jennifer, thank you. I revert soon to you. But let me talk about Bob Marley. Um, let me talk about Bob Marley. I, I, I love Bob Marley. I love Bob Marley, especially Redemption Song. You know, the thrilling event gonna be alright. I love it. What I mean, Happy Mother's Day to you. I've lost count of Mother's Day. But regardless, I mean, no one was, uh, was born with a life's manual. We all have our mothers, and by the way, fathers too, to be grateful for, for who we are today. Uh, we'll be mm -hmm. having a story on that today. Okay. Uh, we'll be mm -hmm. having a story on that. Now, with the federal government, which says it has completed evacuation of Nigerian students stranded in the Sudan, Musa Baba Ali reports that more than 2,000 Nigerians were airlifted back home in 15 flight batches. For the past two weeks, the federal government engaged her relevant agencies in ensuring that all Nigerians stranded in Sudan and Egypt are lifted back home. What we promised is that nobody will be left behind. Four airlines we are engaged in the evacuation exercise and most rendered free services. 1,116 Nigerians, mostly students, women and children, were first airlifted home from Aswan International Airport, Egypt, while more than 1,400 were evacuated from Port Sudan. We have come back with a lot, with at least maybe 80-90% of our, of our Nigerians who were stranded there and we have not recorded any fatality, any death, is a good fit for Nigeria. The chairman of the Federal Government Committee on Evacuation, Dr. Sani Gorzo, said during the exercise, no Nigerian life has been lost. Uh, our committee will not stop its work until we have liaised with the Ministry of Education to help you find alternatives as the need may be. So don't, don't have any fears. We will be with you even before, uh, uh, even after this, ex uh, after this uh, stressful period, to make sure that you are adequately rehabilitated and brought back to continue your studies where necessary. Out of um, danger, but they're already in the territory, their home. So if they need additional medical assistance, they will get it. But on arrival, they have that medical assessment been done by the port health. Attention will now be diverted to other Nigerians that left Sudan for Saudi Arabia, Ethiopia, and Chad. 
Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. And the federal government says it will continue to combat cyber crimes and other related offenses through appropriate legislations. Now, the Solicitor General of the Federation and Permanent Secretary, Federal Minister of Justice, Beatrice Jodiaga, affirmed this at the, at the end of a week long training, the training the trainers on cyber crime and electronic evidence for judges and prosecutors. Daily Atombi reports. Available statistics have shown that only a small fraction of cyber crimes is actually prosecuted and adjudicated upon. Due to the nature of the commission of the crime, the development places emphasis on electronic evidence not only for cyber crimes but even for traditional crimes. This has made it even more imperative to build capacity on the gathering, use an appropriate manner of tendering the evidence in court for it to be admissible. Since admissibility of evidence is an important aspect of proving the commission of a crime, major stakeholders in the justice system must be trained and retrained on the new trends in electronic evidence. I am convinced that building effective repository of knowledge and expertise in electronic evidence on cybercrime prosecution will certainly ensue skilled prosecution and effective judicial proceedings. I therefore commend the Global Action on Cybercrime Extended of the Council of Europe, the West African Response on Cybercrime and Fight Against Cybercrime, and the Federal Ministry of Justice of the Federation for this initiative. I hope that this will be the first in a series of continued engagement on capacity building in the area of cybercrime. Uh, we're very keen to also take any useful suggestions from this training along in the ministry. Uh, it's something that we're determined to follow through. This training, experts say, will enhance participants' ability to effectively apply cybercrime legislation and respond to the challenges it poses. Nigeria is a signatory to the Budapest Convention, which is a global effort to combat cybercrimes. In Abuja, Dili Atumbi, NTA News. And the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDREA, has made several arrests and seizures across Nigeria. Uh, two businessmen were arrested at the Nandi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja for allegedly ingesting cocaine pellets. They excreted 193 pellets of illicit drugs after three days in custody. Now, the agency also raided drug joints in Kanu and Abuja, arresting 185 suspects with different quantities of illicit substances. And while NDLEA says it has intercepted parcels of cocaine from Saudi Arabia and Canada, seized tremodol pills and other opioids, and apprehended several drug dealers across Nigeria. And in line with the federal government's policy on provision of affordable houses for Nigerian workers, the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria, FMBN, in collaboration with NLC, TUC and NECA, have delivered 180 housing units with inauguration at Hillview Estate, 33-3 Nkwere, Nzunaka, Anambra State. Dora Enwe has the details. The housing estate project developed under the phase two of the FMBN, NLC, TUC, and NECA to accommodate workers consists of 180 housing units comprising of 120 units of two bedroom semi detached bungalows and 60 units of three bedroom fully detached bungalows at 7 million and 8 million naira, respectively. The managing director of Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria represented by the Executive Director of Business Development and Portfolio Management and other directors, expressed joy and sense of fulfillment that the collaboration between the various workers' union has achieved its purpose of developing affordable housing for Nigerian workers. With the positioning of this housing project, our strategic collaboration engagement with labor centers has grown beyond mere rhetoric as other FMPN, NRC, TUC, NECA projects are being commissioned in other states, Abia, Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, and Jigawa State. I believe we can achieve greater lofty heights in housing development if we continue with the collaborative strategies 
and we drive this estate project from the distribution to completion. Representative of the Anambra State Governor, Ernest Obiajoge, expressed satisfaction with the execution and prompt delivery of the project. Other union leaders bear their mind on the debt. We are ready to accommodate as many as investors, as many as housing providers, as many as we want to build a livable and prosperous uh, homeland. The state government should cooperate, cause the USA, federal government part of Nigeria, to ensure that a greater number of workers benefit from this project. The Hillview Housing Estate in Kwele Zunaka in Oyi local government area of Anambra State, financed by Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria, was developed by Master Holdings Nigeria Limited in Onicha. Dora Enwe, NTA News. And Wakot Rice Limited, a subsidiary of Tropical General Investments, TGI Group, says the ongoing expansion of its 120,000 tons rice mill in Argungu, Kebi State, will be completed in the next two months. Now, chairman of the company, Farouk Kumar, said that this while speaking shortly after the managing director of the company, Kumar, was taken or uh, took some stakeholders around the new facility. Delhatu Abdullahi completes the report. Balkot Rice Limited in Argungu, Kebi State, is a subsidiary of Tropical General Investment Group and the single largest mill in Africa. It has since establishment produces quality rice. It has engaged rice farmers from four local government areas in Kebi State by launching an outgrower program to supply paddy to the company, in addition to providing job opportunities to many indigents of the state. The company has worked even stronger, and this time around it is building a new rice processing mill and it has reached 99% stage of completion. Chairman Wakot Rice Limited Farouk Gumel announced the company's grant of scholarship to four girls from the Federal Government College, Berni Yauri, recently released from the bandits' captivity for their educational pursuit up to university level. When we put it with our first line, that means this site in Arugungu will process 240,000 metric tons of Nigerian paddy. Governor Kevin State Atiku Bagudu said President Mohamed Buhari has approved the establishment of Agricultural Mechanization Institute in Kebi State as part of efforts to develop agriculture. Wakot not only helped in the production, but processing to the highest quality that today non-Nigerians across the country are confident that Nigerian rice is equivalent to the very best that is being brought elsewhere. Governor-elect Kebi State, Dr. Nasir Idris, pledged to sustain the partnership with the company and appealed to it to extend its financial and material support to rice farmers in all the local government areas of Kebi State. We are subsidizing agriculture and our people are happy and they will be more appropriate in Kebi. We can see that right in the because of the partnership with Wakot that are really supporting the local farmer. The management of Wakot had early appeared homage to the Amaya of Argungu Samaila Muhammad Mira, who commended the company's immense contribution to the country's food security and wealth creation and assured them of continued support at all times. The ongoing construction of residences for the staff of the company has reached an appreciable level of completion and the management of Wakot had earlier inspected the site in Sokoto, Dalhatu Abdullahi, NTA News. And the LNPC Limited, in collaboration with its partner, Stantita Security Services, have posted a company fraudulently involved in crude oil theft. A barge with 700 barrels of illegally loaded crude was set ablaze to show crude oil thieves that they cannot be business, or it cannot be business as usual. Didier Samson reports from Maui Crude Oil Dump, an illegal crude oil barge sites in the Kutudu local government area of Worry State of Delta State. Oil theft is taking a worrisome dimension. This is because some industry players license for different operations are allegedly using their license for crude oil theft. The good news is that 
the activities did not escape the eagle eyes of security operatives. Although Maui Services Limited has approval from the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority to provide services within the confines of lifting sludge, but on the fateful voyage that barge was intercepted, it was loaded with crude oil. Intelligence reports received two weeks earlier by Tantita Security Services Nigeria Limited and Mason Engineering indicated that the location was being used for activities outside its approval limits. In addition, Intelligence also revealed that a 1,000 metric ton capacity barge was coming to berth alongside its jetty, loaded with illegal crude oil, declared as sludge. A sewage truck was coming into this place and going out. As at that particular point in time, we thought then that it was actually coming here to process sewage. It did about two trips. It was on the third trip. We didn't think that there was going to be that much sewage in this place for a truck to be coming in and going out, and we had to apprehend the truck. So upon getting the truck and inspecting it, we discovered it was carrying crude oil. When NNPC Limited and Tantita Security Services took journalists on assessment within the Maui Services Limited premises, there were two metallic cylindrical tanks of about 45,000 liters capacity each. Both tanks were inspected and one was found to be filled with crude oil. At the illegal crude oil barge inspection, four suspects apprehended confirmed that it was crude oil they had on board. Uh, what we have inside, because it was not all the compartment that carried the crude, is uh, about uh, 600 or uh, 700. I can't give you exactly what was inside. 700 barrels that was in, crude oil that was inside here. The 7,000 barrels illegal crude oil on the barge was set ablaze as deterrent. From worry, Lydia Samson, NTA News. Lydia Sampson there in the line of duty. You're watching the news on Newsline. All right, welcome back. If you just joined in, you're watching the news on Newsline tonight. Now, following the expiration of four-year tenure of members of the governing board of the Northeast Development Commission on the 7th of this month, the managing director and CEO of the commission, Mohammed Al-Kali, as has directed as directed by the supervising ministry has handed over the affairs of the commission to al haji ali girma director humanitarian affairs of the ministry of humanitarian affairs disaster management and social development girma is to oversee the commission pending the reconstitution of the commission the outgoing md and ceo who were Appreciated President Muhammad Buhari for the opportunity given him to serve as the pioneer CEO of the Commission. Also commended governors of the six states in the region and other official players. Uh, Kali equally appreciated management and staff for the cooperation which made the Commission to achieve a lot. Now, scaling up productivity along agricultural value chain through innovative technology as obtained in developed countries must be the priority of the Nigerian agricultural sector. Now, this is part of the submissions of experts during interactive engagement at the second edition of Open Day organized by the Center for Dry Land Agriculture, Bayero University in Kano. Yohanna Su Hassan reports. These are young entrepreneurs who contested in the agri-hacking program to mark the second Open Day Award presentation and exhibition by the Center for Dry Land Agriculture, Bayero University, Kano. Eight different companies won an award of 2 million naira each to boost their businesses towards attainment of self-reliance. I've been thinking of how to improve the innovative part of aquaculture. We applied since January, so they shortlist us, and now we are invited to come and pitch our business. I'm processing spices which are locally sourced in our open market, especially the kasokurimi. So if our young ones are supported in that particular direction, definitely in the very near future in the country, there is going to be a lot of us off. We feel also there are a lot of young people with brilliant ideas that just need a little nudge for them to actualize their ideas into products. As a center of excellence, the Vice-Chancellor of Bayer University, Kano Sagir Adamo Abbas, said 
working with development partners and ensuring in-depth researches, the center now harvests large yield of assorted produce, which it sells out at lower cost to the public. So we always make sure that what we are bringing here is readily fresh. We are currently working with 675,000 farmers across 10 states in Nigeria, of which 80% of them are women. We need to really make these women, especially in the rural areas, to build their capacity, build their social capital around cooperatives, link them to sustainable sources of finance. The modest achievements by the center include having students from 12 different countries supporting young entrepreneurs with viable enterprises in addition to graduating more than 600 postgraduate students in five years. In Kanu, Yohana Sahasa, NTA News. All right, let's turn attention now to the word nurse. It is described as a substitute word for a person strong enough to tolerate everything, yet soft enough to understand everyone. Now, during the week, the world turned attention to these special breed of people to say, we are forever in your debt. Captured in the 2023 campaign theme, our nurses, our future. Now, Darcy Taikban reports on the role of nurses in meeting the goal of universal health coverage and the effervescence of Florence Nightingale, the lady with the lamp. Just like this, Florence Nightingale, nicknamed the lady with the lamp, is said to be always available where suffering was at its worst and the need to help was at greatest. How many nurses do we have today? Who possess such qualities. Absolutely. We still have Florence Nightingale in our times, and you're looking at one already. Remember, we have nursing everywhere in the world, but we do not have nurses everywhere in the world. But when you look at a nurse, you will see a real picture of Florence Nightingale being passionate, being careful, and being trying to handle everything with all sense of maturity, dignified human being. The Nurses Week, therefore, is an opportunity to not only mark the birth of Florence Nightingale, but also educate, inform, and review challenges faced by nurses and midwives at their workplaces and to chart the way forward. And then come up with recommendations that will assist the government in making policies that will shape the healthcare system for a better nursing workforce and improve service delivery. He who takes care of patients with love and dedication deserve to enjoy a day as a nurse. Our nurses, our future, our future. and that speaks volume. As I was going through, I said to myself, can we close our eyes and imagine that there are no nurses or no medical personnel? The need for a more conducive work environment to avoid brain drain in the health sector terminated this question. And the word filled me, the effervescence of Florence Nightingale, it should be. Now, mothers come with a lot of packages, care, comfort, patience, love, sacrifice, and the list is endless. Across the world, different tribes encapsulate the role of mothers in different names. For instance, you'll get to hear Neka, Mother is Supreme among the Igbos, Yanwura, Mother is Gold or Mother is Precious, and that's in Yoruba. Now, Mamame Albarka means a blessed mother in household language. So, on this second Sunday of May, a special day recognized by the international community for mothers. Our correspondent, Ifoma Ojinta, reports on how some Nigerians have been celebrating their mothers. Today is a celebration honoring the mother of the family or individual, motherhood, maternal bond, as well as the influence of mothers into society. Though Mother's Day is celebrated on different days in many parts of the world, as Modern Sunday or Women's Day, most commonly in the month of March, there is a universal appreciation of mothers everywhere. Many believe that 
Mothers truly deserve the world every day as they play multiple roles providing care and support to those they love even under difficult circumstances. The fathers the home have to appreciate the sacrifices of women. Everybody is an offspring of a woman. You can't come into the world except through a woman. So it's such a special occasion. We celebrate our mothers, our wives, our sisters. Mother is supreme. Mother is gold to me. I feel each time I remember my mom. I also remember every other woman around in the world. The history of Mother's Day celebrated on the second Sunday in May annually had its beginning in the year 1858 with Anne Mary Reeves in the United States. She was working to heal the nation after the Civil War. She created the Mother's Friendship Club, teaching women how to care for their children and wounded soldiers. The club was instrumental in facilitating the reconciliation process between the warring parties. It is in her honor that the second Sunday was set aside in 1914 as Mother's Day. I want to thank our mothers for sustaining our families, sustaining our homes. And I want to just on this day celebrate them. And I pray that the Lord God Almighty will bless them for all their sacrifices. And remember today that the love of a mother is the purest form of joy that you will ever experience. Ifoma Ojinta, NTA News. And as I said earlier, no one is born with a life manual. So we join the rest of the international community to thank all mothers. Let's take a look at sports now. And it seems that uh, Arsenal Premier League title hopes is gradually slipping out of their hands. Badi Adelaide has more. Fears about AC Milan's promising young talent, Victor Leto's availability for Nigeria at the 2023 Under-20 World Cup have been laid to rest with the youngster now in the camp of the Flying Eagles as they prepare for their campaign in Argentina. Leto, a versatile player who can operate in both defensive and central midfield positions, had encountered scheduling conflicts with his club commitments at Milan, preventing him from joining the team in Abuja earlier. However, he finally obtained his entry visa to Argentina in Milan and arrived in time to bolster the squad as they finalized preparations for the World Cup. In England, Arsenal's Premier League title hopes now look to be over as Brighton delivered a brilliant performance to claim an emphatic 3-0 win at the Emirates on Sunday. Earlier, Ikai Ondoan netted twice and assisted one as Manchester City beat relegation-threatened Everton 3-0 at Goodison Park to move closer to clinching another title. City now require just one win from their remaining games against Chelsea, Brighton and Brentford to be guaranteed their third title in a row. And to tennis, Rafa Nadal has turned down a wildcard offer for next week's Challenger tournament in Bordeaux as his participation in the French Open hangs in the balance. Nadal has not played since the Australian Open in January due to a hip injury and is battling to be fit for the Roland Garros Grand Slam, which starts in Paris on May the 20th. Nadal has won the French Open a record 14 times. With sports update, Badi Adeleye, NT News. And just before we go, President Mohamed Buhari prays for God's comfort for Professor Ralph Akinfeleye and family at their trying period of grief with the passing of his wife, Mrs. Carol Anike Akinfeleye. In a condolence message, the President condoles with family, friends and associates of Mrs. Akinfeleye whose good works will continue to speak, particularly about the many lives she touched with her charity, kindness, and love. As the family prepares for the final rites of the deceased, who was the Yeye Gokunyi of Idori Kingdom, and a former school principal and director of education in Lagos State, the president urges the full trust in the Almighty God for strength and direction, and prays God to grant the deceased eternal rest and that's the end of the news from Abuja and um, if you're like me who is a fan of Bob Marley especially Redemption Song and it's not the only one who talked about 
the need to free our mental state. Uh, the likes of Frank Fanon also did that. And I'm sure that Jennifer uh, will be playing one of those, you know, lyrics in the course of her, uh, pack, you know, baggage. Jennifer. Thank you, Claire. And Bob Marley is an icon indeed that will celebrate for decades to come. That shows the power of good music. Now, four decades after his demise, his music is still relevant to millions of people across the globe. The Jamaican singer, songwriter, and guitarist, Bob Marley, achieved worldwide fame for messages of peace, love, and unity fused into his music. To celebrate the 42nd anniversary of his death, the African Renaissance and Reggae Revival, FAR3, put together Niger Reggae Revival 23, a night to showcase the Rastafarian root culture. Agatha Eguare Ojo will fill us in on the Reggae Trapped Night at Canada World in Benin City. <laughs> Music of Bob Mali rented the air all through the night, with Mali fans adorned in Rastafarian paraphernalia and colors, swing their bodies to reggae music. Only your friend know your secret. Minister of State Clem Agba took his turn on stage. So I love music. I play all genres of music. One message that I do hear from him, especially for blacks, because he says, anywhere you're from, as long as you're a black man, you're an African. You know, for Africans, it's for us to think ourselves. You know, for us to have confidence in ourselves. The reggae beat continued, but this time, words in local dialect, popular in this part of Nigeria. Performance of this little reggae fan thrilled the minister and other guests, leaving her with cash gifts and free membership of Performing Musician Association of Nigeria, PBAN. The idea is also to grow young talents and why we take care of the old talents. We are not only looking at uh, celebrating the likes of uh, Bob Marley, including Majek Fashek, who you know was a bundle of talent, a reggae artist. As they continued well into the night to the start of a new day to celebrate the life and timeless music of legend Bob Marley, his one love resonates on all to rebuild fences of unity. Bob Nestor Mali, the reason for the celebration, died of melanoma skin cancer in Miami, Florida, in the USA, on the morning of May 11, 1981. He was only 36. <laughs> Raskimono, he died, uh, uh, Bob Marley died early, but made great impact. And we have our own reggae musicians in Nigeria who also uh, told his path and made remarkable uh, achievements in that direction, like Raskimono, Majek Fashek, and Oris Wiliki, who's still alive. So reggae will continue to live with strong messages. Now, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo will be leaving office soon, in a couple of days, when a new administration will be sworn in. If you're wondering what type of job he wishes to pick up, wait for the answer from Jide Onifade. <laughs> Oh, the truth. 
says is an animated musical, arguably the first of its kind in Nigeria, a production that captures Nigeria's culture. It is titled Gami and the Living Things, adapted into a 110 minute 3D feature film and a five part mini stories. Well, the idea is to put a spotlight on Nigerian animation. We think the time has come for Nigerian animation to be at the fore, you know, conti on the continent and also globally. So, um, whatever it is that we think and believe would aid the effort is what we're trying to do. So, the story features Gami and a gamma lizard which seeks excitement and success beyond the slow-paced life of the interland by embarking on a challenging journey to Lagos with his musical loving friends. Together they strive to achieve their dreams and conquer the bustling city. The characters are not only relatable and appealing but also colorful. The cast are well-known faces in the Nigerian movie industry such as Pete Edoji, Joker Silva, Bimbo Akintola Shegun Arinzi, John Dumelo from Ghana, and Avril from Kenya. With for it, the captivating voice of the Vice President could also be heard. I've also told Ken that uh, in a few weeks, uh, maybe in fact less than two weeks, I'll be out of a job. <laughs> but I know that at least this is something that I we want to do right away. So let me again congratulate everyone on this very, very exceptional production. And we look forward to even more coming out of the little bit. We've had great um, moral support from the Vice President who um, is a kindred spirit and supports innovation and um, things like this, you know, he, he supports and encourages, so we're grateful for that. <laughs> This president is really young at heart and have you noticed that over time that he has shown interest in um, anything that has to do with technology so I'm not surprised that he's involved in animation. Well done, way to go. It is often said that there is ability in disability when a physically challenged person engages or performs a task meant for able-bodied individuals. In this next report, Kende Lamidi tells the story of an amputee football player who continues to show appreciation to God after miraculously surviving an accident over two decades ago. Over 15 male and female amputee football players, drawn from the six geopolitical zones of Nigeria, converged on the legacy pitch of the National Stadium Lagos to compete in the medium edition of, of the 2023 National Amputee Football Zona Championship in Lagos. At the end of the championship, trophies and medals were awarded to the victorious teams, while individuals were also presented awards for their performance during the championship. Hence, this dance to express their feelings. There is a big team that says there are so many dance skills imaginarily exhibited in the mind of a physically challenged person, but he or she is incapacitated because of the condition. This cliche is proved wrong as these amputees danced to the melodious music played by the Nigerian Football Supporters Club. One of these dancers, unknown to others, has reasons to dance in appreciation to God for sparing a life to be useful to our state as an amputee football player. Coincidentally, this month of May marks 21 years since she had an accident in Cardinal State that led to her leg being amputated. The first of May, I came from Kafantan as a student nurse to visit Kaduna. I went for a visit. On my way going back, a moving vehicle knocked me down while I was seven months pregnant. 
I went to the theater, my leg was amputated, second June. He can't knock me down first May, the leg was amputated second June, and I gave birth on the 13th of July, the same year, 2001, making it 21 years of being an amputee. Obviously emotional, as I bet James, who is a net worker under the Kaduna State Ministry of Health, declared that God has been good to her. An able person cannot dance the way I, as a disabled person, dances even at now. If you knew yourself, you can't even dance the way I dance. Which I know, you cannot dance. If I were to compete with you, I would dance better than you. You that is able and I'm an, an, an amputated person. But there is ability in me. On our sojourn in the amputee football game, as I base one of the dependable players, Currently with the Cardinal State team. I started dancing since I was uh, having my legs, and it's still in me, and I'm still dancing it. The mother of two advised those in her condition not to lose hope. Rather, they should be happy and determined to be useful to their communities, states, and Nigeria in general. Any adult like me can dance anywhere, anyhow, in the club, in the church, in the mosque. In the field, just as they are playing and we are dancing now, anywhere we are, let us show our ability and dance it out. Listening to her is just, I mean, great because no matter your condition, no matter the challenges, never give up. There's always hope. And she is a good example of that. To drug abuse, Colorado, to a widely traveled individual, is just another state in the United States of America. To some Nigerian youths, however, Colorado connotes a state of ecstasy. How and why is this so? In our next report, Grace Ayuleke reveals the myth and reality of Colorado currently posing a threat to the stability of young minds and adults alike. Colorado is a state in the mountain sub-region of the West Coast in the United States of America. It is known for its forest, pristine lake, and of course, mountains. But away from geographical description and travelogue, Colorado means something else in the Nigerian street palace. Uh, it's real good, but it's not good for body. If I say take Colorado, it will be, it will be misbehaved. I mean, I say it's not good, I say it's not good. No, that's not good, ah, it's not good. The girls will be for body. The chemical will be the two police are too high. I don't think I'm for bad. The person will take care of where, where, the surrounding is where, where. The online viral report of a 71-year-old man who died after taking Colorado in Ibado was therefore a must cover for NTA. Our crew set out on a fact finding mission and lo and behold. Here lies the remains of Mr. Kunle, popularly known as Baba Joss, the owner of this edifice. He was allegedly killed after smoking a dangerous substance known as Colorado. Neighbors and tenants of his Aba Lamu residence in Apata area of Ibado, who would not speak on camera, however, debunked the rumors of the 71 year old sleeping into coma after ingesting Colorado, insisting that the old man died of natural causes, old age related. Colorado is uh, a refined extract from cannabis, its effects on human health are so diverse. First, uh, it can lead to, it can make one to have difficulty in breathing. It can make your, uh, you, you can have numbness, numbness of your hands and toe. It also can make it to be shaky. You, you have to be like tremor. And it can make one to be unconscious. And if care is not taken, it can lead to death. When you have to take drug, please try and visit your pharmacist. They know what drug you can take, what, when to take them, how to take them, what not to take along when you are taking a particular drug. By and large, experts reiterate continuous advocacy on drug abuse 
and its effects to drastically reduce the menace and in the long run improve the socio-economic development of the nation. <laughs> The guy that bragged that he takes Colorado, did you, did you see how he was looking? Drug abuse is a killer. Stay away from drugs. Please, there's no excuse for it. No excuse whatsoever. Now, it is truly sad world to live in when people would rather use their mobile phones to record others in life-threatening situations rather than lend a helping hand. Our next story involves a man, Sunday Daniel, who was killed while mediating in an incident involving his friend who was accused of urinating near a house in Zangodaji community near Lokoja. Security agents have been called upon to work in tandem with relevant stakeholders to investigate the matter and restore peace as threat of escalation looms. Solomon Ayedei provides further insight. A home for every Nigerian, Zangondaji is one of the fastest growing cosmopolitan communities in Lokoja, the Kogi State capital. If not properly handled, any breakdown in law and order in the area could snowball into a serious crisis. This Zango is a mean Nigeria entirely because we live together here. No any tribe went no day for Zango. In light of this, the recent happenings in which one Sunday Osagbemi was stabbed to death while trying to settle a rift involving his friend for urinating on a fence of a building and eventual bringing down of the house. The guy was coming with his friend and waited to ease himself here in this particular building. But the landlord and the children came out that don't eat yourself in that place. Where are the guy already started? He said himself. So the thing became a fight. Sunday, that was killed, coming with a bike. Right where we are standing now, he parked his bike here and stopped and said, Go back. Let Go me back, Carry on. rescue them. Please stop fighting because this thing has, uh, has been settled already. Where are the guy inside ran inside, ran from inside, according to the eyewitness. That the son of the man that held this guy clothes with a knife and stabbed him twice. When other people were trying to burn the house, we rescued them out of the ceiling. But there are about six people on the top of the ceiling of the building. And thank God for the security personnel, the vigilante, and hunter uncle. If not for their intervention, they would have raised down this house. Or if they should raise down this house, it will affect this smokes. And once it affects this mox, it will result to religious uh, crisis. And you know what it means. Sunday is my son. He's my last born. <laughs> He's a peacemaker. I want to sympathize with the family of disease. Because it's not easy. It's not easy. But I want to appeal to them also that they should temper justice with mercy. The suspect have been arrested and the police have... Uh, conducted investigation and we have concluded our investigation and the suspect is going to be arraigned in court to face the rule from the law and that, that will also serve as a deterrent to other people. While lamenting the incident, residents appealed for the establishment of a police post for effective policing of the area. We need support from federal government or state government to give us vehicle for patrol. They also encouraged the state government to do more in the community to checkmate the activities of criminal-minded individuals in the interest of all. Violence is never an option and solves nothing actually but compounds situations. We'll keep you posted on that story. Time for some messages, more interesting features when we return. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Peaceful coexistence and tolerance are certainly important goals. To this end, slowly and steadily, the Cardinal Onayeko Center for Peace, just like many other organizations, is sowing seeds of 
harmonious and brotherly living between Christians and Muslims across Nigeria. Is it yielding results? Oh yes, says Omenka Amarachuku. Let's hear the report. All the way from Numan in Adamawa State, Yukera Solomon joins a bus down to Abuja. She and many others from different states across Nigeria and Africa, Christians and Muslims alike, are graduating after a one-year intensive course and mentoring on peace building and justice through interfaith cooperation. This interfaith program in fact changes lives and it touches the lives of people. That program brings us together. We really realize we are from the same creator. We we'll work in five local governments for a start and see that these groups are working perfectly and we'll be supervising them and training them so that we'll have maximum impact. Exchange ideas to learn how to coexist with others. We are able to establish local, national and international network. Yes, not her. Here are also pastors, imams and other members cutting across diverse fields and structure, all fully armed with the seed of peace and tolerance to be replanted in their immediate but different environments. A, a forum that many ethnic groups and different religious groups that come together to learn something on peace. My calling is on people that use religion and create chaos among people. Religion never teach chaos. That is the vision of the organizer to see in Nigeria and Africa where love and harmony thrives. It should help people be better people. It should help, it should help society to be better societies. So when we are hearing that people, because of religion, are killing other people, when we find that uh, uh, religion is mixed with politics to create conflict and misunderstanding, I get worried. Tend to respect other people in the way they follow God. Pictures are taken, new friends and relations are established, an indication the seed of tolerance is gradually germinating and waiting to be replicated by all and sundry, just as Eukarya carries her own back to Adamawa to begin the planting. Wonderful initiative. Peace, love and tolerance are crucial for national unity. Let's not forget that. Now, have you ever cared to notice the obsession and penchant an average canary has for incense, be it at home or public places? Among this ethnic group with a rich historical origin, incense, popularly known as kaji or turari wuta in Hausa, plays a vital role both in the home and other places of living. It is also used for beautification. Iya Iyaji takes a look at the rising profile and significance of incense among this ethnic group, not minding threats by forces of modernity. <laughs> The act of burning incense has been an important ritual since ancient times, believed to have originated in Egypt in the time of the Old Kingdom. Incense has a long history of being used in conjunction with ceremonies, ritual, spiritual, and religious occasions. Talking out of experience and as a family man, I don't think I would ever get attracted to any woman that doesn't use incense to complement her fashion. As a matter of fact, within the Kanuri people using incense is considered a way of life owing to so many reasons. 
love my wife because staying with her pleases me. I easily get attracted to her simply because of the incense she applies. As a man with taste for good things, I usually go for the expensive incenses for the use of my family. Incense comes in many forms. But for the Kanuri in particular, in fact, even when we were young, our elder, my grandparents used to tell us, you should never allow the smell of your body be felt by anybody. And how can you take it away? Yes, you of course you can take bath and use deodorants, but then there are these are natural ways of maintaining the good essence of your body so that after the bath, then you have to rub specifically, maybe burn this incense so that it goes right deep into the impact the various points of where impact some um, sweat comes in from human body as a woman i use incense to give good smell to my body and my partner as soon as the women smoked their cloth and their body with the uh with, with this kind of uh, incense you will uh, find them quite attractive and then it enhances their personal uh, beauty. We have a cultural way of beautifying ourselves and the environment. Iyamaji, thank you for that report. Time for another break. Newsland will continue soon. Thanks for being there. In some cases, after a divorce, one partner may still be jealous if he or she finds out the other is in a new relationship. Could this be the reason why a man in Yola Adamawa State allegedly killed his divorced wife a day to her wedding to another man? Afiniki Emmanuel tells us more. Suspects who hails from Lenowa Jishagari Phase 2 in Yola South Local Government area allegedly beat up his divorced wife Nana Fadimatsu to death by hitting her with hard objects where she fell down unconscious and was later confirmed dead. Amir murdered her following a disagreement between them after hearing of her proposed marriage to another man the next day. I did not hit her with anything. I just slapped her. The PPRO Adamao State Police Command SP Sleiman Yaya Guruje said officers are deployed to take over the investigation and ensure law takes its course and called on people to report any suspicious movement around them. Police has a responsibility of protecting lives and properties. Whatever the case may be, life has been tempered with. In that regard, we are going to investigate and investigate it discreetly. And if found wanting, definitely the command will not relent in prosecuting him so that it can serve as lessons to others. Lesson to other important line. A mother has been described as a walking miracle, one who understands even what a child does not say and a refuge in times of trouble. Indeed. So why on earth would someone kill his own mother like a son did in Kano? Umar, I mean Umar, reports. It is unimaginable, but it happened. Biting the finger that feeds you, it is beyond that. It is more like a sacrilege. In Kano, it is beyond a taboo. It was a shocking revelation that came to the people of Riminkebe area of Kumboto local government in Kano state. When the news about the days of a 50-year-old woman in the hands of her biological son Ibrahim, referred to as Iro, came to them like a storm. He was said to be away from her for some time. And the news of his arrival was received with the character of a mother in her. However, the encounter turned out to be deadly. So that we had her anxiously and happily asking for Ibrahim. He held her hand as if he wants to tell her something. And the next thing we heard was loud screaming three times. 
It is not the days that was devastating. The way she was mercilessly murdered is more devastating. He called his mother, hold her hand, and pull her there as if he once tell her something, and she was happy to receive her son, not knowing that he came with a hidden motive. The 22-year-old alleged murderer, Yuru, accused his mother of being among those that bewitched him, and that his intention was not to kill his mother. However, it happened. <laughs> After being arrested by the police in his hideout in Dawa Kintofa local government, he was confirmed to be dealing in drugs. On preliminary investigation, the suspect or best to have single-handedly committed the act and also he confessed to be a drug uh, dealer. He has been dealing in drugs and he has been abusing drugs for a long uh, time. The deceased has since been laid to rest. You see why we say stay away from drugs. Now when you think you've seen it all, another ugly incident rears its ugly head. And the question begging for answer is, how did we get here? One of such is the gruesome murder of a 53-year-old father of seven, Jimo Adiagbo, by his teenage son. Correspondent Grace Ayoliki brings us details of the tragic incident which happened in Tede Atibo local government area of Oyo State. A quiet town at the Okeogo area of Oyo State, hosting the administrative center of the Atibo local government area, makes the news for one wrong reason. Here, 18-year-old Ismail Adeagbo is suspected to have murdered his father, although rumors have it that he belongs to the cult group that mandated him to kill his father. While speaking during a routine parade at the Oyo State Police Command Headquarters, Ismail did not state any specific reason for committing the heinous act. He slept outside in the compound. I woke up around 11 p.m., took the iron rod, hit him on the head, and went back to sleep. He did nothing wrong to me, but I have always seen him beat our mother ever since I was a child. The boy in question, with his age, nobody will expect that he could even hurt a fly. <laughs> this boy has always been known to be acting stubborn towards his father and when he is scolded he would pack out of the house the couple quarrel all the time the last time they quarrel they threaten to kill each other we didn't know it would turn out this way we've been together for 30 years i have no means to defend myself whenever he beats me up with the suspect exposure to evidence of domestic violence at the home front. Expert advise parents to do more as they raise children. Was he proud of his father in any way? Did he ever consider his father as a model, a role model? If all the answers to these questions are no, then it means that there was no connection between him and his dad in the first place. The kind of friends he keeps. Parents have a huge responsibility to bond. Uh, by talking about parents, it has to be father and mother. And that brings us to the point of the high rate of divorce, single parenting, and all of those issues. They complicate it. What goes through the mind of somebody who takes another person's life can only be imagined. We may not be able to actually put paid to why he did it. As Ismail and his mother confess to their involvement in the crime, the police say prosecution would begin in earnest. Meanwhile, the deceased, Jimo Adeagbo, who was a civil servant at the Works Department of Atizbo Local Government Office, has since been buried in his compound, Alakuko Junction, on Jaishu Road, today. Well, we are following the story and we'll keep you posted. Let's now take our last commercial break. We'll be back. Welcome back. 
In view of his contributions to the advancement of the cause of other people and the nation at large, as a seasoned teacher and administrator, Creme de la Creme of Nigerian polity converged on Eda Afikbo South in Ebony State to celebrate late Prince Michael Ekumankama for his life of impact. Caleb Obona reports that President Mohamed Buhari, while consoling the Minister of State for Health and his family, stated that his virtues of integrity and honesty is what is needed to drive the country forward. Late Prince Michael and Kumankama, who went to the ways of all mortals at the age of 93, occupied a vintage position in the society which impacted the education sector and also initiated moves that brought change to a bony state and Nigeria at large. Little wonder his burial attracted dignitaries from all walks of life, including a delegation from the presidency. A life well lived will give birth to eternity in heaven. For President Muhammad Ibrahim, presented by the Minister of Health, Dr. Sagie Hanire, and other top government functionaries, the virtues of integrity, peace, hard work, and kindness, as bitted by the late Petrarch, are what is needed for national cohesion and development. For the life he lived and the gap he has left, to bear, to pray that we all have the fortitude to bear this loss and to continue in the way that he wants you to continue. Papa lived a very good life, and you can see a reflection of hard work, honesty, and good natured character. From his biography, you know that he lived well and touched the life of the community. With emotional laden voices, the family of Enkumankama and friends described him as a pillar of light that illuminated far beyond his shores. I will forever cherish and miss your fatherly disposition towards us all. Your wise counsel still leads me on. I will forever be greatly missed. He taught us at all times to be upright. Through him, they knew that Christ was right. And because they knew that Christ was right, light came into our family. Late Prince Michael Nkumankama, who is survived by a wife and nine sons, among whom is the Minister of State for Health, Dr. Joseph Nkumankama, may not rise again, but he sure lives in the annals of history. <laughs> May soul rest in peace. Amen. Now this is where we'll end today's edition of Newsline. Thank you for being a part of it from beginning to end. Join us again Sunday next week for another wonderful edition. Good night and God bless Nigeria. <laughs>